السلام عليكم ولكم تو نيو فيديو اول فيديو توداي از اباوت سيل ترانسبورت ذس از ا سيل ا سيل از ا بيزك يونت اوف اول ليفينج ثينجز ساتش از بلانتس انيمالز اند هيومنز سو اول ليفينج ثينجز ار ميد اوف سيلز اند وي كول ذا سيل ذا بيزك يونت اوف اول ليفينج ثينجز بوت ذا سيل از نوت ان از ايزوليتد انتيتي اتس سراوندد باي اذر سيلز اند ذيس سيلز كومينيكيت امونج ايتش اذر Then this communication is important to maintain what we call homeostasis. Homeostasis is a condition of optimal functioning for the organism. It is the condition where everything is perfect in the body, just like temperature, liquid balance, O2 level, etc. So all these cells communicate among each other in order to maintain this case or this state of homeostasis. Now, in order to keep this homeostasis, there is what we call a cell transport. The cell transport is the movement of substances into and outside the cell, and this is uh, maintained or controlled by a very important organelle in the cell, which is the plasma membrane. As we see here, the plasma membrane is not just a simple layer. It is uh, made by... Um, We call it a phospholipid bilayer. Each one of these are a molecule called phospholipid, and this phospholipid is made up of two parts. One, the first one, is the polar head, which is hydrophilic. It is it can tolerate water. It can mix with water, and the other part is non-polar tail. It's like a tail, and it is hydrophobic. It doesn't like to mix with water. It mixes more with uh, fatty uh, molecules like uh, cholesterol. So as we see here, this is the phospholipid bilayer and the plasma membrane also has proteins inside it. It has cholesterol, it has carbohydrates, and each of, each of these has its own function. Cell transport has two types. The first type is called passive transport which does not need energy and we'll know later on how and the second type is active transport and it does need energy now starting with passive transport passive transport as we said earlier is the transport that does not need energy and this energy is the form of atp which is a chemical compound a chemical molecule this chemical molecule can release a huge amount of energy and this molecule is uh, produced inside cells. The types of passive transport are diffusion, facilitated diffusion and osmosis. What we mean by it doesn't need energy, let's take uh, an example. This skier, if he's going down a snow hill, he will be going very easily. Okay, and in this way the passive transport Uh, works because molecules when they are transported they move easily with the concentration gradient or with the flow of molecules we mean by from high concentration to low concentration let's start with the first type of passive transport which is diffusion we'll take this as the plasma membrane let's say uh, outside the cell this is outside the cell and this is inside the cell there are oxygen molecules the concentration of oxygen molecules outside the cell and the blood coming to the cell is more than that in the cell because the cell consumed the oxygen gas now it needs more oxygen that's why oxygen molecules start to diffuse from high concentration to a low concentration very easily oxygen molecules are small molecules that can pass through plasma membranes without any effort without any need of energy another example is the carbon dioxide molecule uh, inside the cell the level or the concentration of carbon dioxide is more than that out the, outside the cell that's why carbon dioxide diffuses through the plasma membrane from inside the cell to outside the cell here molecules are moving along the concentration gradient with the concentration gradient from high to low so they do not need any energy so diffusion is the movement of particles along the concentration gradient which means from high to low concentration 
Now the second type of uh, passive transport is what we call facilitated diffusion and as the name suggests it's a diffusion but it's facilitated by, it's uh, helped by certain proteins called uh, channels such as this protein channel or this carrier protein. Okay, uh, although these are channels but they do not require energy because first they are moving, the molecules are moving from high concentration medium to a low concentration medium but they need these channels because they are uh, large uh, in size or uh, for example here uh, uh, like a glucose uh, glucose is large it can't fit inside the plasma membrane so it needs a channel and uh, let's say when the cell needs glucose to pr produce energy okay the glucose molecules will diffuse from uh, outside which is a high concentration medium to inside through this channel this protein channel Another example is the carrier protein. For example, if we have molecules that want to get out of the cell along the concentration gradient from high concentration to a low, but they are big in size, they cannot fit inside the plasma membrane. They enter uh, through the carrier protein as we see here, and the carrier protein changes its uh, ch shape to allow uh, the molecule to get out. And this uh, is repeated again and again until the molecules all go out of the cell. So facilitated diffusion is the medium, uh, is the movement of particles along the concentration gradient, but through a channel or a carrier protein. The last type of passive transport is called osmosis. Let's say the cell, as we said, it's surrounded by substances. Uh, here it's surrounded by um, solutions and uh, let's say a case where the amount of solute is higher uh, outside the cell than inside the cell. In order to keep homeostasis where the cell shouldn't, uh, there shouldn't be this difference in the concentration of solute, the uh, amount, the water will get out of the cell in order to make a balance. Uh, because the solute is large, can be large molecules, it cannot move. That's why water will move and it will move from uh, where there is a low concentration of solute to a high concentration of solute in order to dissolve the solute and decrease its concentration. We know from uh, previous classes that when we want to dilute a to dilute a solution we want to decrease the amount of solute we have to uh, increase the amount of solvent in this case the solvent is water that's why the cell the water inside the cell will get out of the cell and this will cause the cell to shrink this uh, case is called hypertonic medium the cell here we call it it's in a hypertonic medium where there is a high concentration of solute around uh, the cell the second case for example let's say inside the cell the amount of solute the concentration of solute is much higher than outside the cell that's why in the same manner the water has to get inside the cell in order to decrease the concentration to dilute this solution inside the cell and decrease the concentration of the solute that's why the cell will swell it will be filled up with uh, liquid water and it will become much bigger than usual this case is called hypotonic medium or the cell here is in a hypotonic medium where the amount of solute inside it is much higher than outside it. The third case which is the optimum case where the amount of solute inside and outside the cell is equal is balanced that's why water starts to move in and out of the cell as we see here sometimes water gets inside some water, sometimes it gets outside and in this case we call it the isotonic medium where there is balance and here there is dynamic equilibrium where water continues to get in and out of the cell in order to keep the equilibrium and this is called dynamic equilibrium so osmosis is the diffusion but of water from a solution of low concentration of solute 
to a solution of high concentration of solute. Now, after we finish talking about passive transport, let's talk about the active transport, which we said it needs ATP, it needs energy. Uh, the types of active transport are first protein pumps, endocytosis and exocytosis. Now this type of transport needs energy because the molecules are moving against the concentration gradient. They are moving from low concentration medium to a high concentration medium as the skier. Imagine the skier going against the gradient from low to high. He will need so much energy to get up to the hill. Let's start with the first type which is protein pumps. The protein pump it looks like the channel, uh, the protein uh, channel or carrier, but this type of pump uh, needs energy. Let's say, and the most important or most obvious um, example of protein pumps is the sodium potassium protein pumps which is important in uh, nervous system signaling. Okay, let's say the sodium uh, ions want to enter the cell, okay, they enter inside certain places inside the pump and when they enter the molecule of ATP, the ATP is the adenosine triphosphate, it has three uh, phosphorus molecules, the uh, ATP will break, it will leave a, phosphor, a phosphorus molecule or um, a piece of it on the channel, this will cause the conformational change of the shape of the pump and the sodium ions will enter to the cell. Now, the potassium ions inside the cell will go and sit in their places and when they are sit in their, their places, the phosphor um, just uh, breaks from the pump and again, there will be conformational change of the shape, it will return to its original shape and the potassium ions will get out of the cells. So protein pumps is the movement of material against concentration gradient through a pump powered by ATP. The second type of active transport is called endocytosis and as the name suggests, endo means inside and cytosis is for the cell. So this is when the cell um, takes into it large molecules and the most obvious example is phagocytosis when the phagocyte, here we have a monocyte, engulfs a bacterium during the non-specific immune response uh, when the cell makes um, a circle here, it's building a vesicle around the bacterium and uh, the bacterium became, uh, is now inside the macrophage. Here there is endocytosis. The cell engulfed the bacterium, it made a vesicle around it, okay, and this is what we call endocytosis. Of course this needs energy. It is taking liquids, this also is used to take in liquids, large quantities of liquids, or fairly large molecules such as bacterium here or other molecules by engulfing them in a membrane or what we call a vesicle that is like a sac. The last type of active transport is exocytosis and here we say exo means exit outside the cell. Also here uh, the cell wants to release outside of it large molecules or wastes uh, etc. We'll also take an example of phagocytosis when the phagocyte uh, ends phagocytosis it breaks down the bacterium for example and wants to release the debris, the waste product of this bacterium. Uh, they are inside the vesicle, also the vesicle fuses to the plasma membrane and opens up until the molecules are released outside of it. So exocytosis is the release of substance out of a cell by the fusion of a vesicle with the, with the membrane. The vesicle fuses with the membrane and becomes one and uh, the molecule gets outside of the cell. Again, let's wrap up what we talked about. Cell transport has two types, passive transport which does not need energy and active transport which needs energy and both types of transport all work for keeping the homeostasis inside the body. That's all for today. I hope you understood everything. Thanks for watching and goodbye.